look, we've been in quarantine for so long, or at least it feels that way, that I have all this new gray hair. Oh my gosh. Hi, I'm Cece Mel, and I'm here to um, talk some more about this book, El Defo, and today we are on chapter 10. And if you're a fan of the book, you know that chapter 10 is one, the one and only Martha Clater shows up in the book. It's a very exciting time, ladies and gentlemen. And so without further ado, let us begin with chapter 10. So chapter 10 begins on page 118 and um, it's just a lonely bus ride home and even though the bus is filled with kids, many of those kids from my neighborhood, I'm feeling very, very lonely. Um, neither of my friendships feels like it's working out. The one with Laura, not so great. The one with Jenny, not so great either. And so I'm just feeling very lonely. And even when the neighborhood kids invite me to play games with them, I say, no, I'm too busy. I'm too busy. Um, I've got a lot of homework. And a part of that was probably because I was feeling just not in the mood. But another part is like in that lower left panel, I really did struggle with neighborhood games because it was just so difficult to understand with the kids when they were yelling up and down the street. So, no thanks. I'll just go and feel sorry for myself now, which is exactly what I do on page 119. And we have this sort of, probably, I mean, I'm sure this happened many times, but I just stuck it here for good storytelling, hopefully good storytelling. And um, Jenny gives me a call and wants me to come over and I tell my mom to essentially lie and tell Jenny that I'm too busy. Am I too busy? I don't think so. I'm actually sitting on my butt watching television. It looks like Tom and Jerry to be exact. Um, so mom gets mad. I don't like lying to your friends. Go outside. So I go outside and on the next page, page 120, I'm still feeling kind of sad and blue. And then I notice a little red-headed girl with pigtails across the street with a bucket doing something very interesting. And she yells across the street to me. And once again, I don't understand what she's saying because she's so far away and the sound gets sort of warped over a distance and I also can't see her face to lip read, but I make the assumption, I bet she's asked me to come over. And on page 121, um, I asked my mom if I can come over or rather go over to see Martha. And mom is very excited. Of course, you should totally do that. And but she does this thing where she did, which blah, 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 blah. tongue tied. She, in the book, she does this thing which she did for many years, which was watch me cross the street. And I think she did that longer then most parents watch their children cross the street because she really worried that maybe I would look both ways, but I wouldn't hear something that might be coming. And so she watched and I was always a little embarrassed by that, but I do understand it. Um, anyway, anyway, I go across the street and I meet Martha for the first time in the whole book. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have a massive treat for you, and that is 
you get to meet the real Martha Crater. So we got together on Zoom and I want to share some of that conversation with you now. You're gonna love Martha and um, you'll see me after. So enjoy Martha and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. I am here with the star of the book, the most important part of the whole thing, a young lady whose name is Martha, Martha. Martha Clater. It's Martha Clater, the real Martha Clater, and her hair is still red, ladies and gentlemen. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go through the book together. And um, what I'm hoping to get at is maybe um well one of the interesting things about writing your own story as probably everybody knows is your take on this story is much different from another person who was actually there too and i also i mean i acknowledged all along that i fudged some of the facts and you know to make for a smoother story <laughs> i lied to make for um a smoother storytelling experience. So even though everything in the book is true, it's sort of true with uh, a twist. And so what I thought it would be fun to do would be to go through each page a little bit and maybe get Martha's point of view and Martha's take on what really happened, right. the gospel according to Martha. So we'll start basically with page 120 and 121 and the implication here is that I looked across the street and there was Martha playing but I don't think that's really how we met how do you think we met Martha I'm kind of thinking we met at church but I you think we may have met at church from our mamas you know and maybe in Sunday school or something but I do remember you being across the street. Oh, you do? Okay. Yes. And neither one of us were allowed to cross the street. Exactly. Our mother wouldn't let us cross the street. So right. we would just kind of yell at each other. Right. <laughs> and I didn't understand a word you right. said. <laughs> right. But we were still, it was a friend that was across the street. And I, I moved in um, when I started kindergarten. So when I was right. five, I moved in. And you would have been, you know, above me by and a half, probably. whole grades. Right. And that's, uh, that's the part of the book that isn't true. Because in the book on page 121, um, I'm, I'm saying that I'm in fourth grade and that you're in third grade. Right. But when we met, we were much younger than that, I think. And um, quite a bit younger. Maybe more like you were in probably... I was probably in third grade and you were in. I think you were even younger. You I think we probably younger. met when I was four and you would have been maybe six. So oh my five, gosh. Five and seven because. Right. Five and seven sounds maybe believable, right. but it didn't seem like our friendship really congealed until we were a little bit older. Right. And the thing is, I'm two years, two grades older, right. but, but in real life, it's. My birthday is 1970 December, right? And you're February. 73, February. So it's more like what 14 months, right? I, people, she's super smart. You just, you know, her I know. mom and dad, get her, get, her out. get her out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want her right. anymore. Number three, but, so they were they were ready for you to, you know, yeah, get right. started early, <laughs> right? <laughs> get out. Get out of there. Right. Exactly. Hurry, right. So we're actually closer in age. And that's why I decided to make the grades closer. Sure. Because it just made it would be hard to explain all that when I could just say we're one we're one grade different. Absolutely. Yeah. I think later if people were to ask questions about, you know, our friendships as we became older, it became harder because we were yeah. separated and in different schools. So right. we were in different schools and didn't have as much time together. Right. And we did drift apart. I mean, not what could having, we do? Not yeah. having the bus rides together, you know, yeah. all the first time that you had. 
Right, right. Makes and me then, so sad for the kids right now during COVID, not being able to be with their friends. Yeah, totally. That's a really good point. Oh, Martha, no. <laughs> I know. Now we're going to cry. I know. So, so we, maybe we did sort of meet kind of the way it is in the book. And mm -hmm. then um, um, in that very, the panel that's right here where I say, um, fancy meeting you here. Do you remember your mom saying oh, yes. this to us? That, that, I was like, I gotta put that in there. Definitely, that was perfect. Yeah. And then on 122, I talk about, um, I, we definitely made dirt soup together. And I mean, we made a lot of stuff like that. And big old, you know, buckets and put dirt and junk in it. And then there was that awesome tree right. that was on, um, in between your house and Polly Morton's house. Miss Polly's house, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the way the, the leaves it was came the magnolia. Out. Was it a magnolia? It was a giant magnolia tree that had that big, you know, yeah. that on. And we could play under there, yes. and that was our house. That was Little House on the Prairie. Yes. Yeah. It was. And it's funny, too, now that I'm older, reverting back to that, and that dream of, you know, being a homesteader and wanting to take care of yourself. And, um, yeah. you know, your house is very back to that too, of the fun yeah. things, imagination. And you, do people know the house that you live in? Yeah. Yeah. I know yeah. you talked about that initially that your house. Definitely. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. But what were some of the other shows you remember us watching? The Waltons. That we definitely watched the Waltons. Yeah. Little House mm -hmm. on the Prairie. The Muppets. And what a terrible friend. <laughs> you know, of watching the Muppets all the time. But in, that you would just sit there and humor me and watch it with me and then say, what did they say? And then I would catch <laughs> you up, you know, really quickly. Like, they said this. Ha ah, ha ha. You know? But I don't think I remember too much of that with you. We didn't watch that much TV. We didn't watch TV. I think that our, our parents had restrictions on it. Oh, not my parents. That well, was our, your parents. Do it. My parents were like, yeah, do whatever you want. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's a cigarette. Go ahead and smoke it. <laughs> no, no. But mine were much looser. Your mom, your mom and dad were like, you know. Well, we didn't have cable. Oh. We didn't have cable. So that yeah. was another thing that I didn't have that. I had just yeah. the three channels and right. really only um, we didn't get ABC because that was in a town that was too far away from us. So we had <laughs> CBS, NBC, and PBS. So we spent a lot of time on PBS too. Oh, yeah. Like we watched Fat Albert and Electric I Company. We're watching that with you. No, 321 Contact. Sisters, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We watched, I just felt like we watched 321 Contact. Three, two, one. Contact is the reason, it's, it's the moment that everything happens. Contact. <laughs> Let's make love. contact. Yes. <laughs> Do you remember the Bloodhound Gang? Yes. Oh. The Bloodhound Gang. Whenever there's trouble, we're there on the double. We're the Bloodhound Gang. Yeah. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. We played more than we watched TV. We did. We yeah. played a lot. We did. Play, 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 play. Right. And so this was pretty accurate, I think. Definitely. Um, 123, we spent many nights together. The book only shows that one, one sleepover. But I remember one summer in particular where we just went back and, back forth, and forth. Back and forth between houses. Every night. Oh, it was, it was the so greatest, awesome. greatest summer of my life. I think mine too. Mm -hmm. I think mine too. And the way both of our houses, neither of our houses, were, they were both old. Right. And they didn't have AC. No air conditioning. We both had like the hotter than hot upstairs. Mm -hmm. And your bedroom had that oscillating fan yeah. that's in the book. And um, we slept, um, we slept <laughs> downstairs. Yeah, baby. <laughs> It was awesome. And we just, I think at one point we tried to ask our parents if we could um, string up a basket that we could go across the street. Yes. And yeah, yeah, but they said no. They said no. We did try the cans. 
the telephone can. Do you remember doing that? Oh, yeah. We tried that. I would scream into the can. It <laughs> did not work for me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I'm on 124 now, page 124, and we get to see your mom and dad and um, your two sisters. Martha is in the middle, and so she's got an older sister named Sarah, like my sister, and a younger sister named Catherine. And Martha was in the middle, and in that second panel, when I see your dad, and I think, dreamy, but that was the... Um, Oh, here comes the train. Do you hear the train? Mm -mm. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, the whole neighborhood thought that your dad was just like Mr. Super Good Looking. And he, and he still is. He he is. The fountain of youth. He looks like he he's is. 20. That's because, that's because all of his ladies treated him so well. Oh, all those yeah. daughters and mm -hmm. these four. His wife, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good old like a king. Uh, mm -hmm. And now tell us what your, what was your dad's job? It was like architecture related. That's what I remember. He was a civil engineer and a licensed architect. And he worked for a company called John Hancock Steel. And he That's designed it. all the open web joists that you see. For example, if you walk into a Walmart and you look up in the triangle. Yeah. They would design those. And they also had a fabrication shop right there in Salem. So they did, you know, turnkey. So they would design it for the business and then manufacture it, you know, web it, make it right there and then ship it to them. Oh, so mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And your mom was a nurse. My mom was a nurse. Right. Like, like mama. Like your mom. Yay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So um, we talk about, I talk about, well, you tell me in the book, you say, you know, dad's picking up Long John Silver's and we're eating in front of the TV. And that's something we did quite a bit at your house. Your, your family seemed to, we to did. love Long well, John Silver's. You remembered my parents doing it, but that was really a treat for us when yeah. my mom and dad went out on a date. Right. And, yes, and Khaki, my grandmother, babysat us. And we would order the food and have that. And that was when we got to have um, silvers, yes. But it seemed like I got it more than once at your house. But I remember when your mom read the book, she was outraged that I mentioned Long John Silvers and that we ate in front of the TV. She was oh. just like, no. <laughs> we did. We watched Dallas with Kathy. Oh, mm -hmm. oh my God. But yeah, I mean, the... The Long John Silver's was a pickup treat when my parents and they would go out on the weekends, you know, on okay. their date. And so you would be over at our house as daughter. I guess so. Over. Right. And so, so they would not have been there then. Like in the book, it looks like they're eating Long John there, Silver's with it. Right. But it was actually your grandmother. Yes, it was actually That's my grandmother. So interesting. And did your grandmother smoke? She did. Don't I don't remember. Did she smoke inside? Yes. Yeah, that's what I remember. Your house always smelled different when Kaki was there. He was there. <laughs> Both my grandmothers smoked. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Long John Silver. So your parents would not have been there. So that, my friends, is a lie. <laughs> well, I mean, it's your memory. So your memory yeah. are... You know, like you're saying too, sensual, you remember it's smelling. So you remember the cigarette smoke. I mean, you remember those things. Those are scent yeah. memories. So, right. Yeah. yeah. That's so interesting. That's so interesting. Right. So 125, I have us um, playing with the tiny cans. Do you remember your tiny cans? You had that whole, like you had your window, bedroom window, and there were these little shelves and the little, tiny, the little cans. And Catherine, your little sister, always wanted to play with us. Supermarket, right. Yeah. Oh. And Catherine, yeah, the best, the best toys mm -hmm. or strawberry shortcake toys, remember? Yes. And the, the ones you squeeze and, ah. <laughs> um, so then you, you probably remember this as much as I did. I, don't, I only think it happened once, but maybe it happened more than once where in, in the book, basically, you know, you, um, oh, we haven't gotten there yet. At this point, we're just looking down on shorts and spelling things, <laughs> but I won't say that on camera. No, 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 no. Right. But then 
you had a reputation when you were a kid as being a talker. As a kid? But I, I would also work Not talking. now. Would you tell people now that you would still turn your hearing aids off on me in the middle of the night if we stay in the same hotel room? Have you um. ever told them that? <laughs> <laughs> that you still do this? Uh, click, click. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think my she, memory does. she still turns them off. She <laughs> doesn't want to listen to me. Not anymore. Your your um your voice is like the most beautiful melody that I'll never turn off, Martha. Never. <laughs> but um, I remember specifically what you were doing. This memory, and I I didn't put it in there because I thought it would be too confusing. But you were reading a book out loud to me. Oh. And you were, um, which is very sweet, but you were in that phase of wanting to show me everything and you put your, you know, you had your finger under it and everything and it was driving me nuts. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm just going to go cook, cook. <laughs> and so the book implies that, um, that I thought that um, you didn't know about my hearing aids and hearing loss. And I, I kind of think there was a period, I mean, I know there was a period when we first started hanging out that I thought, oh, she doesn't know. And I'm going to try to not make a big deal about this because I don't want her to make a big deal about it. And you never did. I mean, it was never, it was never a thing the way it was with maybe some of the other people in the book, other friends in the book. But um, do you remember at all did you um, put two and two together or did somebody tell you or did you just, mm -hmm. you just knew? I don't know. I just think I just figured it out. It or wasn't like your mom wasn't like, be nice to the deaf girl across the street. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine your mom saying that. No, no but it, it wasn't. Um, my parents are very different too, Cece. So coming from, um, they got married very young. Right. And so they were, you know, only 19 and 20 when they had my sister and they lived in federal housing. Right. And, you know, when you were talking earlier about moms, their jobs, our moms were nurses. So we spent a lot of time at um, the Catawba Mental Hospital and we spent a lot of time, um, you know, seeing your mom, going to go see her at the nursing home where she was a nurse. Um, I, I don't think that it just, it just never really phased me, I guess maybe. Right. It was just, that's who you are. This is who I am. Right. You know, I have bright red hair and freckles <laughs> and that's, you know, sometimes that can be picked on. Yeah, right. Exactly. So it, it just wasn't, um, I don't ever think there was a moment that was like, ah, no, I mean, there never was that. Right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. There and maybe it's just that. because of how our parents were. I mean, your, your dad working, my mom, you know, and your mom, all of us, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, I think you're absolutely right. I think just some kids, oh, just people, not even kids, just some people just naturally will maybe we'll notice something different about somebody else and they don't care at all. They're having a good time with the person. They just, they just don't change the way they are. But then other people, and this happens still to me as an adult, will, will meet me and they won't know and everything's great. And then they find out and then there's something changes. Right. Then it becomes awkward. Then it becomes awkward. Sure. And, um, and and sometimes that just kind of hurts a little bit, you know. But at the same time, you know, I understand, you know, they're like, they're trying to adapt when maybe they don't need to adapt, you right. know. Yeah. So I think. Um, but that could be, I mean, like what you're saying, that could be anything. So, yeah, anything. Right. right. As adults, it could be your profession. Right. You um, do what? <laughs> your religion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Politics. I mean, it, oh, could politics, be anything. So it could be yeah. anything. So I don't know. 
Just because you're awesome, Martha. <laughs> no, you're awesome too. <laughs> so where do we go from there? So we have you our little worried. You were worried here? Do you remember thinking that? Wait, let me see. What page are you on? Page, on page 127. Oh. Do wait. you remember when you say, oh, I've ruined everything? Do you, did you oh. really think that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. I did. I mean, I felt like, I mean, I knew that it was rude. Just, you're basically ignoring somebody when you turn your hearing aids off on them. And I was just <laughs> afraid that, you know, that yes. you, your feelings would be hurt. They were. Were they hurt? Were they hurt? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Oh, you and stopped. Perfect. I mean, I could have gone on and on. I just loved you so much. I wanted to, like, every breathing moment. You know what they call it now? The FOMO, fear of missing out? Yeah. <laughs> I definitely had that, which is funny to me that I had the fear of missing out, of missing out what you were thinking, missing out oh, what, yeah. you know, and you had the FOMO of missing out that you didn't hear or that you had misinterpreted what was going on. But right. we all have that. We all do. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, I think I probably hurt your feelings. But in the book, you're sort of like, oh, no, that's hilarious. <laughs> it's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And especially this I have the beautiful fantasy where you get to be the amazing Mighty Martha um, in your um Robin outfit. Your outfit is close to Batman. Robin. We did watch Batman and Robin. We did watch that. Oh, yeah, we did. Oh, so good. And the monkeys. <laughs> did you, um, what did you think of yourself as um, a superhero in the book? Did well, you, you know, I was shocked. I was shocked. I mean, we had talked about it, about what you were doing and what your plans were. Right. But I didn't really know how you were going to develop El Defo, the character. And you had told me, you know, ahead of time. Um, when we were adults. Yeah. Yeah. Right. When we were adults and you were trying to, your mom was trying to convince you to write the book and, you know, being your cheerleader of you can do this. And right. I started begging you to uh, please tell this story. It's a phenomenal story. We had so much fun as children. And I mean, that's pretty exceptional right there. I think that the fact that we had so much fun and that we had such a friendship that, you know, I feel for other kids that don't have that. I mean, Oh, me too. Really, we couldn't have been any closer if we were blood relatives and oh, absolutely. I just, you know, I hate that for, because I, my kids, I don't think had that. We moved a lot. And right. they didn't have yeah. that. Um, but yeah. back to this, I was totally surprised that you made the character, this, these actual superheroes and yeah. then shocked to see that. But, um, as, as shocked as I was, um, shocked and like, just, you were surprised that Shocked in what way? Like positively? Oh yeah, definitely. Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, yeah, it's just it was it was really fun writing the chapters with you in them. And it's it's surprising to me that it takes half of the book before we even meet you. I know. And you're like the big part of, I mean, you're such a huge, huge part of the story, massive part of the story, and we don't meet you until, you're only in the second half. Yeah. Wasn't Martha the greatest? Oh, she's so funny and kind and just awesome. And we will see more of her when we talk about chapter 11 and chapter 12. And chapter 11 is, of course, Mutt Miller. Woo, woo, woo. So anyway, thank you for joining me. It might be a couple of weeks before you see chapter 11. Um, there's a lot going on. But um, you'll see it eventually. So thank you so much for tuning in. And I will talk to you later. Bye.